Since we've been talking about John a lot in recent weeks, I'm going to instead emphasize the beautiful second reading. This is from St. Paul's letter to the Thessalonians and would be considered the single oldest book in the entire New Testament. It was probably written as early as the year 50. Jesus has not even been gone 20 years. And what we have here is the final blessing or conclusion from that first letter of Paul. And of course he begins with what is usually considered the theme of this third Sunday of Advent, rejoice always. Now that's easy to say, <laughs> but as you well know, it's harder to do. To really stay positive all of the time with the suffering, with the sadness, with the trials that come into each of our lives, I think most of us would consider it naive and impossible. But maybe then he gives us a few clues as to how we can do that. He says, in all circumstances, give thanks. There's basically two immediate responses to every moment, either positive or negative. Either we like it or we don't like it. Either we go toward it or we pull back from it. Now the natural ego human response is to pull back from it to see what we don't like, to see the cup half empty, to compare it to another moment or another person or another day or another experience. And then we live always dissatisfied with what isn't. Now I think we all have to be honest. We know that's true. And if you stay at that point, you basically become, as your life goes on, a more and more negative person, a more judgmental person, a more resentful person, looking for something to blame or someone to be upset at. If you don't guard against that, brothers and sisters, I can tell you that's where you go. You become blaming, critical, negative, and judgmental. And you've got to work against that. How you think is who you are. I know most of us say it's our actions that reveal who we are. Not really, because you can do very positive actions, but filled with resentment inside. And you know that too. You can be judging and critical and uh, hateful even while you're going ahead and doing what you have to do. You've got to nip it in the bud. You've got to recognize that how you think is who you are. And if you don't train that mind to rejoice always, to see the positive, in all circumstances to give thanks, you'll naturally move the other way. Now the sad thing is that for some reason it's easier to gather our energy around problems about uh, negative, problematic things. What's wrong? What do I need to fix? What do I need to change? What do I need to make right? And God knows the amount of suffering in the world, there's plenty we need to work for to make it right. But if you concentrate on what's wrong, it just sucks you in. And for some reason, we're attracted to that. It gives us purpose, focus, energy. We know who the bad people are. We know who the sinners are. We know uh, who the political party is that we hate. That's much of our people and why, brothers and sisters, our country is so filled with anger and hate and fear. Because no one's trained them in the opposite. And if you don't have spiritual training on what to do with your mind when it just sort of floats around and doesn't know where to go, I'll tell you it will go like a magnet toward problems, toward people to hate, toward people to resent, and who your enemies are. You have to work. You have to choose. You have to decide to love. Love is always a decision. Gratitude is always a decision. 
And you've got to guard your mind and your heart. And this is much of the message of Paul, not only in Philippians, as I told you a couple weeks ago, but here in his first letter to the Thessalonians. He says, may the God of peace, peace is a choice, make you perfectly holy in your spirit, in your soul, and in your body. This is the only place, the blessing at the end of Thessalonians, where he mentions the three parts of the human person. The body, which is your material self, the soul, which is your inner self, and the spirit, which is your God self. That part of you that God inhabits, where God fully dwells in each one of you this moment right now. And that's the place you have to learn to trust, to go back to. Because there, all the energy is positive. All the attitude is grateful and rejoicing. If you depend upon simply your soul or your body, you'll find all kind of reasons to be negative. So you have to uncover and discover that place of the Spirit that indwelling presence of God that is equally distributed to every creature on this earth. And what it means to be a Christian is simply to know that. People in every continent, people in every religion are equally and automatically and objectively and forever children of God. The only thing that a Christian is supposed to know although I think a lot of them don't, is that that is true. That you are objectively already entirely children of God. Now that part of you can rejoice always, even when the suffering comes. It isn't easy. But without it, we move into death. We move into negativity, fear, resentment, and judgment. Brothers and sisters, don't do that to yourself or don't allow it to be done to you. And I'm so sad that I think many people do, even those who should know better, those who know that they are objectively and forever children of God. And that's the only thing that's going to allow you to get through your trials, your sufferings, your own death, your own aging, your own unhealth, which is going to come into every one of our lives. And if you haven't learned to guard against it, you will live the final years of your life a depressed person. I'm just telling you the truth. And we have far too many depressed people in this country who do not know what you should know, how to rejoice always and to give thanks in every circumstance. And we pray again that the God of peace will make you perfectly whole and will preserve you entirely in your body, in your soul, in your spirit.